Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time to watch a few more Outlander featurette videos. This one is going to be, of course, from season one. I'm still working on season one. This is going to be a triangle in time. It's about 10 minutes long, almost 10 minutes long. So let's take a look and see what this is. Maybe this is speaking about triangle. Only thing I can think of would be from season one would be Jamie, Claire, and Frank. A triangle, a love triangle, sort of, in time. So let's take a look and see what it is. The triangle at the yeah, heart of the show that's, that's is it. between Claire... been at a point in their lives where they've maybe been torn between two people. But what do you do when someone's in a completely different time and they haven't even been born yet? Does that make it easier? Does that make it harder? Jamie's in the love triangle with Claire and Blackjack or, or Frank. He, he obviously loves Claire, but he's always very aware of Frank. I'm looking forward to the explanation on that ghost scene. Truly caught in a triangle through time. Well, at that point, it's a triangle in her mind, but Frank hadn't been born yet. It is about the 1940s and the 1700s, and it's also the story of a love triangle and uh, two marriages. Frank's relationship with Claire is one of the really, sort of, I think, really good things in the story, actually. They've been separated by the war. They've only seen each other for a handful of days during the, the Second World War, because Claire was a nurse and Frank was uh, in military intelligence. And, and when we pick up the story, they're trying to reunite. And then suddenly she's pulled away. She found herself in this time and place, and, and she was willing to realize that life has to go on, that you can't just sit and pine for another. When Claire first meets Jamie, the initial bond of I don't remember that scene where Ned came in while, Jan while Claire was sewing him up. Her head is about getting home. She's not here to have any kind of relationship with anybody, much less this young man. But nonetheless, there is a spark between the two of them. And during her time at Castle Leac, he becomes a friend, someone that she realizes she can confide in, she can talk to, and provides companionship. Claire feels uh, somewhat more equality with Jamie. Yeah, you know, she has always felt, you know, slightly as though she were Frank's wife, so to speak. And uh, so she really has no role in life except as Mrs. Randall. Whereas uh, with Jamie in the 18th century, uh, once they uh, come together, she is Jamie's wife, but she is still very much the healer, the conjure woman, you know. She, uh, she has her own destiny and she can fulfill it with Jamie, which she could not really do with Frank. Even though he's a man of that time, there is something timeless about him and there's something quite modern about his willingness to kind of change his viewpoint or learn or be open to new ideas. Whatever you tell me, I will believe you. Hmm. And in that episode, she had a lot to tell him. of their souls or I can imagine for actors really love that don't really know each other that well that would be an awkward scene her. he finds a purpose There's so much I can scarcely breathe and the interesting thing about this relationship between her and Jamie is that she doesn't really start to fall in love with him until after they're married and then once that happens and once she sees him for who he is and starts to really let herself feel what she actually feels for him 
she discovers he's the soulmate and they have each other. And then she's really in a, in a difficult dilemma because what is she gonna do? She still yeah. is married to this other man. She feels like she's an adulterer. She feels like she's a bigamist, that she's married to two people at once. She has made the decision to say. Like I say, Jack, uh, uh, Frank wasn't born yet. And it's really her coming to terms with what that means for her. It's her trying to find where her place is in this time. No sooner than they start getting their feet under them and starting to look at life in Lollybrook, when story intervenes and everything is blown apart once again. The problem is, is Jack Randall. He just constantly gets in their way. You know, if it wasn't for Jack, they, they would live a happy life. Felt like it was very black and white you know it's quite clear she meets him the first time and he tries to rape her and it's like then that's it blackjack is the baddie but it's not that clear well he got the name blackjack for a reason fit into the world there's something about he doesn't understand that she's traveled 300 years but he gets that there's something not safe about her something unusual i should call it beautiful lies here's this man who keeps reappearing I don't know if and I yet, remember that drawing, that so scene with that husband. drawing. She constantly is looking for that part of Frank within him and trying to appeal to this sort of traces of humanity that she believes must be inside him. I think initially on a kind of intellectual level, I think she is clearly able to handle herself, to think quickly on her feet. You know, there's a sort of quite a sparring element to their first few encounters. What do you know of the Duke? Really, Captain? Must you be so obtuse? <laughs> it is but being in his position he has much better and more private access to male prisoners under his his sway there's nobody who's going to find out what he's doing to them no one who would help them his darkest secret is that the act of inflicting pain is something that is curious and interesting to him Jamie first yeah some of these Jack. episodes from the uh, end of the I first brought, season were we pretty brutal my first day of filming where he comes and takes Jenny, Jamie's sister, and uh, knocks out Jamie and then beats Jamie. No, let my sister be. It does feel like a, quite a sort of, this is the beginning of, of the whole story for, for Jamie, and it becomes very personal. It's quite simple. Give over to me, make free of your body, and there will be no second flogging. There is an aspect, you know, of, Jack's fascination with Jamie that, that verges into the sexual and into the sadomasochistic. Diana has said Jack is an equal opportunity sadist and pervert in that he's, he's just as likely to go rape women and be sadistic to them as he is to men. And part of it has to do with power. And part of it has to do with his fascination with Jamie's uh, ability to endure pain. And then there was a part of Jack, the sadistic part of Jack, that literally saw beauty in the pain and really so, and started to enjoy. That was a hard the, scene, a hard you know, episode to watch. This one thing that he was inflicting on this young man. I haven't even begun. <laughs> Those are the tactics, but that's not the aim. The aim is to, I think, to break Jamie psychologically. What, what should I, I do with, with you? you? He is the nasty villain who sort of lurks behind the whole time in the story, and then he really, you know, by the end of the season, he shows his true colors, and it gets very horrific. Yeah, very horrific. <laughs> it's not like there's a happily ever after straight away. This is a, a, a long journey you're going to go on with this character. It's going to develop the relationship, and they, and they go places, and I think that's ultimately what gets him through what happens at the end of the series with, with Randall, that they have this bond. It's going to be dark, and it's going to be surprising. It's going to go in directions that I'm pretty sure a lot of audiences are not expecting. That's part of the great friction of the story, you know? Yeah, like I said, uh, some of those episodes from the, well, I'm thinking it was from the end of the first season. The one where they were in the prison, but maybe some that were before where they showed some of the flogging. 
they were pretty brutal. They were they were hard to watch. And I've gone back and and rewatched some of the first season. I've gone back and rewatched a lot of the episodes over the well since I started watching Outlander. And I have to admit, when I get to a few of those episodes with the the, the really harsh brutalities, I tend to skip over those or maybe fast forward through some of those scenes because they were so harsh and so brutal and it's just not something that I enjoy watching. So I, I tend to skip over some of that stuff. And I think I've mentioned that I showed these this series, the whole series so far, to my mother, who I've also mentioned I've been taken care of. She's had some strokes, various other health issues. But I went through and edited some of, well, all of the episodes that needed editing to remove some of that brutality, some of that really harsh violence and the the rapes and things of that nature so we were able to watch a little bit more sanitized version and and in doing that she really enjoyed the episodes had i not done that we wouldn't have gotten past the first episode but she's really enjoyed it we still have maybe five episodes from season seven that we still need to watch together i've already watched them all of course and and uploaded all of those reactions already but we'll go back here at some point over the course of the next few weeks months whatever and little by little we'll we'll re-watch or i'll re-watch those last five five or six episodes and then she'll be caught up to the entire season as well the entire series as well but that was interesting that triangle in time of course that was true for the first season and the second season but, of course, by the beginning of the third season, Black Jack Randall's killed off. And here we are now in the seventh season, middle of the seventh season. And Black Jack Randall is just a faint memory in terms of the story. They've, they've gone on to a lot bigger and better and sometimes harsher kinds of things. So that was interesting. Now, if you enjoyed these videos, please give it a like. And be sure to leave some comments down below. Even if it's just a couple of letters, a, a word, a, a number comments really help videos to to grow as well as the likes and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do go ahead and subscribe nothing helps the channel to grow more than subscribers so please subscribe to the channel and if you want to be notified when i upload new videos be sure to hit the notification bell thanks for watching i'll see you next time